town of Namie lies mostly empty, abandoned in the wake of the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant nearby. But back in March, when the plant began malfunctioning after it was hit by a massive earthquake and tsunami, local residents were moved to a school that was directly in the path of a radiation plume caused by a venting operation. Thousands weren't evacuated from high-risk areas for days. Prime Minister Naoto Kan's government has blamed a failure of the Japanese system to forecast radiation threats. But an Associated Press investigation has found the system itself, set up back in the 1980s, worked just fine. The problem was officials didn't understand it or the data it was generating. Forecast reports put together from information collected at monitoring posts were sent to Japan's nuclear safety agency but never made it to any decision makers, and they didn't understand the significance of the information available enough to ask for it. Namie Mayor Tamotsu Baba is infuriated by the mistakes. It's a lie when the government says it didn't go public with the information on the radiation because it had no idea how much had been released. The communications breakdown that affected Namie may hold lessons for other countries, too, as many similar radiation warning systems are used around the world. In Japan itself, many have been saying the lesson of Fukushima Daiichi ought to be to move away from nuclear power altogether. As the bell tolled in memory of those who died from the atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki back in World War II, the current mayor of the city, Tomihi Satawe, made that point. In order to live in a safer society, we ask that the nation works to develop a renewable energy source that replaces nuclear power. But while the energy picture could change in the future, those who used to live in Namie could end up paying for past mistakes. It's still not even clear exactly how much radiation they may have been exposed to, nor whether they may actually suffer any health problems as a result. Karen Sloan, The Associated Press.